Hey guys, welcome back to the channel SNL Yu-Gi-Oh! And um, today I wanted to recap on the Flame Bell Zombie deck we've been playing. I'm going to move on to something else now, uh, a different deck that we will uh, profile in the next video. But I will return to this. I'll return to all the decks that we do in this like uh, series of deck building and, and testing out and changing things. But we started this about, I think, maybe a week ago where it was just regular Flame Bell. And I didn't like that uh, version very much. I felt like it was... Um, kind of the, the weaker version as compared to the zombie variant because it, it just kind of didn't have any power plays outside of rekindling or resolving a fire dog. Um, it lost, I think, a lot harder to, uh, to decks like Black Wings and Monarchs and um, anything related to uh, Icarus attacking your, your floaters or uh, banishing stuff. I think the addition of the zombie engine helped a lot because... Goblin Zombie, outside of Sangan, I believe, in Edison format, is the only, um, I guess we could call like true floater that doesn't need to, to die by battle or card effect uh, to get its effect. It just needs to be sent to the graveyard. So this kind of helped when dealing with things like Icarus Attack and when dealing with um, just general cards that, that spy and what is it Ryko couldn't deal with because in the plain version we were we were at the these six here i think we we're at the still the same three Ryko, and then we had double hamster i think and triple spy with the descendant but those cards were just super vulnerable to to anything that popped so having the zombie kind of guarantees i mean for the most part unless this gets nobleman or you flip up and attack into a d prison with it you're going to get the effect off so it just kind of has more power plays than just the original kind of uh, regular flame bell variant. I liked not really having to rely on rekindling as much to really um, make a push for game. This engine in itself kind of creates more than just, you know, in Edison a lot of decks just have their normal summon and outside of that can't really do much else. But this engine here, uh, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the two book of life. This 10 card engine here. Can, can create multiple summons in a turn with kind of like the snowball effect of Goblin Zombie or Pyramid Turtle getting to your Goblin Zombie, Goblin Zombie getting to Zombie Master or Mizuki, whatever you happen to be missing between these three. Um, discarding the Mizuki for Zombie Master, summoning something else back, seeing how your opponent responds to that, banishing the Mizuki to summon something else back. So this this engine here is just, a, it, it it's powerful and it's a lot more powerful than I think the other version where you're just relying on uh, spy resolving, um, Ryko resolving, hamster resolving. It's 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 a lot slower paced, but also lacks in power as compared to this variant. So I, I've been super happy with this build. Um, I think this is probably the best way to play Flame Bell, and I do think that it's a deck that should always you know that I feel like I should always consider when going into like a big tournament especially the one in October that I'm kind of preparing for, which has kind of inspired me to, to really look at decks that I might not be prepared for side deck-wise or look at decks that um, I think could just be kind of like sleeper decks or, or go under the radar. I think this deck is definitely a deck that could go under the radar for sure. Um, Fire Dog, you, you do not want that to resolve. <laughs> I mean, especially if they go Fire Dog, set back row, and have like a rekindling to follow it up. So it can definitely be scary. Um, I don't think I would change anything in this deck at the moment. I think every card is is important, actually. I know I'll always get kind of questions, whether it be like in comments or people saying, you know, like, oh, you really like Phoenix Chain a lot, or, you know, I know it's not common, but I just don't want... Um, this, Caius can just blow this deck out. I mean, and Caius can blow a lot of decks out. If you don't have, like, if you're relying on your set Ryko to kind of get your place going, or your set Goblin Zombie, or your set Pyramid Turtle, and it just gets Kaius away, and you don't really have like a follow-up play to get things going, you can just lose the game. I mean, that momentum shift can just uh, cost you the game. So I didn't want to max out on it, because I like to max out on, on this whenever we're playing like decks with, you know, maybe six plus floaters, because it just serves as a dual purpose card like you can you can force these while also negating something so i like it you can kind of treat it as like a combo card to get things going 
while negating the effect of something. But in this, we're just we're just using the two turtle. But I still wanted to have something to be able to like react to the judgment dragon, or to be able to react to the to the dark armed, um, or the Caius, uh, things like that. You know the the top deck blizzards in the late game. Like there's just there's there's so many cards that this card can just um, win you the game if you have it. Because a lot of the times, whenever outside of like frog summoning Caius, when someone's dropping a dark armed or someone's dropping a judgment dragon, it's usually like let me bait out everything and then drop this card. And then when you just have the fiendish chain to respond to it with, you're in such a good spot. But other than that, I think for like a standard flame bell zombie deck, a lot of this stuff probably is is you know how the deck should play whenever you combine these two engines. I don't think there's anything like out of the norm. Um, maybe some people play one book of life, but I think I think two is important. Um, we're playing a good enough amount of zombies to where we can justify this, and then also the triple Ryko just makes you know cards like Rekindling and Book of Life even better. The charge is to get to the Ryko. I think it's I think it's very important to to max out on Ryko in this deck for sure. Obviously, bring control. We play tuners, and um, it's not a lot of traps, uh, but I wanted to to have something for the slower hands to kind of be able to grind us out there. And I know I'm not playing Book of Moon, which is which is what I was playing originally. When I was when I whenever we were playing like the the regular variant, I, I would say maybe the the more common variant of Flameville. Um, but I felt like in this version, like Fire Dog's not searchable. There's no way you can search it. And Book of Moon in this deck is kind of, I feel like it's not really awkward. Like I didn't want to play Book of Moon and Fiendish Chain in this deck because I felt like there were better cards to play that that were just in terms of like spot removal. And I didn't want to play multiple cards in this deck that uh, didn't didn't get rid of a monster. Like Fiendish Chain, that's that's the one thing about Fiendish Chain is it does not get rid of the monster. The body is still there. But I in pre-testing before I started like making videos just to kind of learn like how the deck functioned and how it operated. Um, before I make videos, I always play you know some games to kind of get the hang of things, so I'm not just hopping on um, and essentially learning how to play the deck for people to watch. I don't feel like that would be entertaining. I need to have some type of understanding of the deck. And so when I was doing that, I was just I was just losing to Caius. Or I was like, oh my gosh, just please don't have Judgment Dragon here. Please don't have Caius here. Please don't have Dark Armed. Um, please don't have, please don't top deck a Blizzard. So it, it was situations like that, which is why I chose to play Phoenix Chain over Book of Moon. And then, yeah, this is pretty normal here. And the side deck, you know, was for the frogs. This is for pretty much anything like heroes being able to like smash and ground the alias so their gemini spark is dead or hit a gladiator beast monster hit a blackwing monster so the icarus attack is dead I'll, you know i'm a big fan of this card i probably side in every edison deck that i play and then the stuff the rest of this is pretty you know like standard stuff but yeah to to kind of recap on this deck that I, I i do plan on revisiting this deck and and all the decks that we play um, as we continue the series, but I do think this is the best variant of this deck. Some version of Flame Bell Zombies, you know, the, the trap lineup is, is probably debatable. Uh, the spell lineup is also probably debatable, but I think the monster lineup, I think you, you pretty much have to play this. You know, you can maybe go to one turtle, but it's just a good starter. I mean, I don't see why you would want to, but the rest of the stuff I feel like you have to play. Uh, the card trooper just makes these cards so much better and, it, you know, it floats into a card. So, yep, that'll be it for the Flameville Zombie deck. Uh, I do plan on coming back to it. Uh, I do think this is, like, a really underrated deck. I think it can it can perform really well. I think Fire Dog being 19 just gets over a lot of stuff. And, um, yeah, I do think that, that this deck has potential to beat a lot of the, the better decks. And um, I'm glad that, you know, I took the time to learn it because I do think it's definitely underrated. But all right, guys, see you in the next video. Thanks.